Hi guys and welcome to the video for the Zion Z1 Tiny 2 brushless gimbal. Now anyone who's seen my review video will know that I've been pretty much blown away by the performance of this little thing um, and I felt it was important to kind of get another video on here which not only shows you how to update the firmware because it's not very well kind of explained on the website or in the manual at all actually um, but also I wanted to show some of the features and the other thing with this is that the uh, the latest firmware for this gimbal has two different kind of firmware versions so they the most recent version 1.11 but they actually have separate versions very similar to what Fairtech did uh, one's called position mode and one's called speed which is quite ironic when you uh, come to see what it does so in this video I'll first show you um, how to do the firmware update and then what I'll do is I'll demonstrate what both of those two modes do so you can kind of decide whether or not you want to go that route and um, which one's going to be best for you so with that let's head over to the computer so just in Google let's go to the Zion homepage so it's zion-tech.com and once we get there we then want to go to support and download what you will need to do is first and foremost you're going to need to depending on with, whether you're on Mac or on, on Windows you're going to need to download the USB driver for Windows so we want to grab that we then want to get the Zion gimbal tools for Windows um, obviously being that I'm using Windows um, and then under here you can see there is um, the Z1 Tiny 2 and there's the firmware so they are all three files that we want to do and all you got to do is just click on them and it will just download and save as etc so I've actually done that already so I have all three of these actually downloaded now what you need to bear in mind is these are all zipped files so ideally you're going to need an extractor um, I use uh, WinRAW personally and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight all three of those folders and I'm going to say extract here and that will pull out all of the various bits that we need so what we now want to do we want to get to the USB folder and we want to install depending on whether you're on 64-bit or 80 um, 32 bit Windows you want to install the one that's version for that uh, if you don't know what yours is just go to my computer right and click on computer properties and you'll see system type 64-bit so I'm going to download that and install the 64-bit We'll fly through this nice and quickly. I have a suspicion that this is actually already installed on this machine, but I could be wrong. There we go, Silicon Labs, and that is now done. Okay, so with that done, let's just back out to the main folder again. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to run the Zion Gimbal Tools software. So we'll double click on that. No need to install it, it's just actually a little program here. Sorry, you do need to install it. So I'll just run through that. Okay, and launch tools. So there we go. So we've got the tools all up and running. So what we can now do, we haven't actually powered on the gimbal. And bear in mind that that's, that's quite important. We haven't actually powered on the gimbal. So let's just go away from this for the moment with that open. And we'll just take a look at the rig that I've got set up here. So what we've got here is we have the gimbal. Um, I've got the USB plugged into it, but I haven't plugged into the computer yet. I've got my Futaba R2008 SB. I'm not using this in any SB mode, uh, in um, S bus mode or anything like that. What I've actually done is I have linked my ailerons here. So my ailerons, which is this one there, that is to the yaw of the gimbal. So in other words, that should swing it around. Um, I've then done the pitch, which is the brown one, to channel number two, which is going to be up and down like this, so the elevator. Sorry, I'm just blocking that out of the way. So that's going to be the your axis, that's going to be the pitch, and then I've got the yellow one I've actually attached to my rudder, and that's actually going to be the roll, so that will actually move the gimbal like this in those various modes. Um, and other than that, what I've then done is channel number 5, which is the 5 volt, the ground, and the white wire. Um, that's the mode switch, and I currently have that set to little switch up in the corner here, SG. So that's going to change my modes from mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, basically. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. So with that all done, what we want to do now, with the USB plugged into the side of the gimbal, um, I'm going to plug this into the computer, and that will fire up and install that. 
and it will do an installation of the device driver as you can see in the bottom but you can also see on the Zion Gimbal tools we see that COM port 4 has become available that's because it's actually recognized that there is something plugged into COM port 4 now again bear in mind I haven't actually powered on the gimbal so I haven't actually run 12 volts to the gimbal at all so with that all installed and doing what we want to do what we now want to do is choose the product on the right hand side so we're going to be doing Z1 Tiny 2 we then want to go over to firmware upgrade. Now what we want to do is we want to click open. So that opens the COM port. So it says at the bottom here, serial port is already open. That's fine. And now what we want to do is I'm going to turn my transmitter on. And now we're going to press connect and you'll see it counts down from 30. Now what that is now waiting for you to do is to basically power on the gimbal. So I'm now going to go back here and I'm just going to grab my cables and send voltage to the gimbal and it turns on you see it's now said it's connect device information successful it's reading it and you can see nothing in this field at all at the moment under file info but underneath what it's telling you you've got mz my mx now these are the motors so each motor has its own version of firmware so interestingly the z and the y axis currently do not have the uh, the latest version of firmware whereas the MX does which is actually the um, the the MX is the your motor so it's really only that that gets upgraded anyway regardless of that you want to make sure you're on the most recent version and we've downloaded version 1.1 so I'll put that back on so now what you want to do is you want to find that file so we go browse and we need to go to downloads find our folder and then you see you've got the option of the two that have been downloaded so you've got v 1.11 p and then v 1.11 s so p is for position and s is for uh, uh, speed is actually what it's called so what i'll do i'm going to put the p version on now so i double click on that and you'll see now it's basically filled this box in and again it shows us what versions are going to go on which are actually the same looking but this is the position version so hit upgrade and that will do a write to whichever motors require the upgrade. So it'll probably be quite quick for this one. There you go, time elapsed, 60 seconds, all done. Now what we can do, you'll see the gimbal sort of kicks into life. I can now close that. And indeed, I can in fact unplug the USB from the computer. So now, I always like to power cycle the gimbal, so I'm gonna now unplug the gimbal like that and I'm going to power it back on get a few of these wires out of the way slightly there we go right so gimbal has initialized now as I said before what I've done is I have um, I've actually rigged this so my tilt motor is on my elevator now you can see because I'm using this on a centered stick what's happening in position mode quite quickly the tilt is now following and rem and returning to center so in position mode you get very ironically you get quite quick reactions whereas speed mode you actually get slow reactions which seems a bit backwards as you can imagine so as i said before what i've also done is i've um connected the um the, the uh, pan so the the yaw of the gimbal is on my ailerons so if I now do this you can see I get very quick reaction to it and indeed the key is that really this mode is perfect if you are using this with a second receiver so if you're actually trying to follow someone in flight someone else is flying for you you can do this nice and quickly and you can kind of get used to how how quickly you can move around now also we do have the roll axis so as you can see if I use my rudder that is there. Now, of course, you don't have to attach these to any of these sticks. You can uh, put them onto slider switches. You can put them onto potentiometers, as most people do, and indeed, as I will do um, eventually. But in position mode, what you've got to bear in mind is everything sort of goes back to center. Um, and that's, that's really, I think, what it's designed for. It's designed for people who are kind of using this for a second controller. And the response time is very quick. Now, if I flip it into mode two, you'll see in mode 2 we get the same thing so the tilt does it but you don't get any your response now and indeed you can still do the roll 
but it's not fixed. So if I put it all the way to the right here and return to center, it will come back to center. Put it into FPV mode, and FPV mode means that the gimbal will basically just follow the nose of the aircraft, including descent. So it will actually tilt down if the nose of the aircraft tilts down. So if you're using, um, uh, you know, a, a racing multicopter or on an aircraft, then that would be the sort of mode that you would use because you want that to not stay on the horizon. You want it to follow the direction of the nose of the aircraft. So I'll flip it back to the main mode. But anyway, you can see there. Now, one caveat to this is, as you can see there is no 320 degrees of rotation. This still only rotates basically about maybe maybe 180 degrees, maybe slightly less, I would say. So you can't spin the thing really, really far around, which is a bit of a shame in this speed mode. And also everything returns to center. So now what we'll do, we'll go into the, um, the other mode, the speed mode, and I'll upgrade the firmware to the speed mode and we'll give you a demonstration of what that looks like. So to do that, all I need to do is I'm just gonna unplug it again. So it powers down the gimbal. I'm gonna plug in my USB again. We head back over to the software, we open the COM port, we click connect again, and that's where we power the gimbal back on. You'll see it's recognized. You can see the last version that we updated was the P version up here. So now all we've got to do is we just go to browse, we choose the S version, and we simply hit upgrade. And again, it will be very quick because it's only actually updating that one motor because it's really just changing the speed of, um, of the X one by the looks of it. So that's all done. And again, we can say close. You can see the gimbal's actually kicked into life. And indeed, if I try it now without doing a power cycle, it will work. I just like to do it because I think sometimes after you've done a firmware upgrade, gimbals prefer to have a power cycle. So let's power cycle it now. And we see it kicks in. So I'm in mode one. Um, so this is in speed mode now. So if you now watch, if I now tilt, you see that when I do a tilt, it doesn't return to center. And indeed, it's much, much slower. So it just pans down nice and smoothly. And it always remains where I last left it. Likewise, if I now use the elevators, you can see the elevators in mode one don't do anything. So you don't have the control in mode one as you did in mode one on the uh, position mode. If I try and do the roll, we do have roll access, but again, you'll see that when I do roll it and return to center, it doesn't return to center itself. So you do have control of it, but it's really a case of just kind of tweaking it slightly and then leaving it. If we wanted to flick it back into sort of forward mode, all we've got to do is put it into FPV mode, which is mode three, and back up, and that re-centers it, um, which is the way to do it. If we then go into mode two, which is kind of heading lock mode, we're now completely in control of the gimbal. So if I then, for example, show you the tilt, that's all working again, smooth, slow, and it stops and stays where you've got it. If I now do the pan, you can see that unlike position mode, it's much slower to respond. But also watch this. I can now go all the way around to the locked extent. So I now have full 320 degree rotation. If we go the other way, hoping my gimbal won't catch. There we go. We have literally 320 degrees and it's an impressive 320 degrees. It's like it's, it's fully 320. So you're getting up and about near some of these new gimbals that are coming out with a full pan round view. However, you have to have it in slow mode or speed, well, speed mode as it's called, but I would prefer to call it slow mode because frankly, it's quite slow. Um, but that will give you full control. Now, bear in mind, that's only in when you're in mode two on this. Now that means that wherever you leave the camera pointing, it will always try and point at it. So you have to remember that if you're flying, say that you're, you're flying around a, uh, a church building, you'd point the camera at the church, you then you're the quadcopter, the camera is gonna stay fixed on that location. The only reason the camera is going to move in any way, shape or form is if you control it. So if you want to actually do a slow rotation around that church, then what you need to remember is that you're going to have to do certain things to actually bring the gimbal round. So you're going to have to put an input to roll around it manually yourself, which 
could be a bit inconvenient when you're flying but not impossible to do again you can put these on slider switches instead of the actual um the actual rudder or any of these these operations you can just put it on the sliders the potentiometers and then work out the best way of doing it so that's basically it so so like i say it's it's nice and simple to actually do the firmware it's not something you should be scared of it's very easy all you've got to remember to do is install the usb then run up the tools and install the tools then once you've done that you've just got to open the port connect and power up the gimbal and then you've just got to find the file press upgrade and then choose whether or not you want the version p or version s um, and other than that that's about it the other one thing that you can look at is the change log which comes with every firmware version by the looks of it and while there is a lot of chinese if i just open it here you can see that it does actually give you some details so position control mode firmware speed control mode firmware um, and also we see on version 1.11 widen the controllable angle of pan axis and that's the 320 degrees so that's the basics of it that's the um, that's the tools i've not covered things like imu calibration on this for the moment because i still haven't really got to grips with that myself so if i feel it needs a separate video um, then i will do it this is pretty much perfectly calibrated and for the fact that you can actually control the yaw um, and the roll then you can kind of manually adjust that if you find that the horizon isn't perfect you can kind of do that whilst in flight if you've got access to those channels so um, hopefully that's been helpful obviously any comments please feel free to leave them and uh, We'll await the next video.